Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tinker with Tools. Tonight we are going to be talking about one of my favorite segments of tools. It's going to be our 12 volt tools and in this case we're going to be talking about hammer drills. We're going to be comparing the soon to be outgoing M12 fuel hammer drill against the latest and greatest from DeWalt's 12 volt extreme lineup. So let's get into that today on Tinker with Tools. So as I mentioned, 12 volt tools are actually one of my favorite segments of tools because of how much power they have and how much work they can get done in such a small size. Today we're going to be talking about two tools. First is going to be the Milwaukee M12 Fuel Hammer Drill. This is actually model number 250420 when it's sold as a bare tool and then they obviously have different kit forms that you can get with it. It is going to come with a half inch all metal ratcheting chuck. It's a two speed drill, then it has 16 different positions on the clutch, along with the drill and hammer modes that are going to give you a lot of versatility there. It is a well built tool. The only gripe or complaint I could really give to it is just the fact that because of the stem style battery that inserts into the handle, the handle is just not as small or compact or ergonomic as what you're going to find on a lot of tools. This isn't any different than any other M12 tool. It is just something to point out in case you do have, you know, a hand that just doesn't fit the tool very well, whether it be too big or too small um, for the tool. It's just not going to fit as many hands, in my opinion, as what it is. The other gripe about M12 tools is just they don't have an onboard battery gauge on the battery, so you do have to have it in the tool to find out if it has a charge or not. I can't tell you how many times I've picked up a battery thinking it was one that I had charged, only to find out it was either in a partial charge state or even an empty battery. And so that is one knock that I will give the M12 tools that I wish they could somehow rectify. Now this tool has been on a di bunch of different little jobs with me, whether it's installs here at my own house, taking it and doing work on other people's houses, or even just being down here in the shop and doing different things like drilling pocket holes or installing different things. I've even used the hammer function a time or two on smaller jobs, and it actually does possess decent power in that regard. All right, so as competition for the Milwaukee today, we are gonna to be talking about the DCD 706, which is DeWalt's 12 volt extreme brushless hammer drill. Now I've had the non hammer drill version for a while, but recently found a clearance still on this one. So I decided not to pass it up and actually get this one in the arsenal as well. And while I'm glad that I did buy the tool, they are essentially the same drill, just with the, with the extra hammer function, which makes the tool a little bit longer. The power rating and everything is going to be the same. So as far as pros and cons of the drill, they're gonna be very similar. It's just one's going to have the ability to hammer and one's not. Now, biggest differences here is DeWalt employs a slide style pack. And so the handle is going to be very familiar to any other DeWalt power tool that you have because it is the same handle that they are putting on everything. Now, because of that, ergonomics wise, this is going to take the cake in terms of ergonomics. In terms of length, it is roughly the same length as the tool, but because of the different battery design, the actual Milwaukee one sits lower in the back, whereas the front is just a little bit higher. Now, just like the Milwaukee, this is a two speed drill. Then you're gonna have 15 clutch positions plus a drill and a hammer mode. So it is going to be one less clutch position, but I don't think you're really going to notice that. In terms of overall speed, the Milwaukee is actually coming in a little bit higher in low speed and about 200 RPMs higher in high speed. Although in my initial testing, I haven't really noticed that big of a difference of it. We'll see if something comes out in the performance testing tonight. Now, the other big difference here is going to be the chuck. The DeWalt is a 3 8 inch chuck that is going to be plastic on the outside. And so it just doesn't feel quite as premium as the Milwaukee. It is going to be a little more limited in terms of drill bits that you can put in there. Although I'm not really certain with these 12 volt tools that the intention is to cram a half inch <laughs> a half inch hex bit into your drill and try and run it like that. They are not meant for super heavy duty stuff, but the nice thing about them is they've both gotten powerful enough that if you need to do it in a pinch, you're probably going to be able to get it done, especially if you kick down to lower the lower gear. We're gonna be running both of these tools with the two amp hour battery. That's most commonly what you're going to see included in the kit for these. Uh, although you do usually see a four amp hour included with the Milwaukee in there as well. 
We're going to test these today, and then later on next month when we do see the new Milwaukee come out, we are going to revisit and see how it compares to this Milwaukee, and then obviously how it compares to its competition in DeWalt. So let's get into the testing and figure out how they fare. All right, so first off, we're going to be doing five driving tests. We are going to start out with the Milwaukee, and we're first going to be driving two three and a half inch deck screws. We're going to add the time together for the two, but not do any of the transition times. All right, now the DeWalt. All right, so right off the bat, first impressions, the DeWalt's a bit peppier. All right, so now we are going with the five inch specs. So you can hear it kind of slow down when it gets going, but at no point it felt like it was going to stop. You know, that is part of being in speed one. The DeWalt felt faster there. All right, now on to the five inch power lag. And now the DeWalt. Last test in the driving test, we are actually going to be going with a six inch timber lock. Okay. We are getting a cut out here. So the DeWalt, or the Milwaukee has failed to drive that in. Looks like we got maybe two and a half inches proud. All right, I've just discovered it had slipped off of the drill into the clutch position 16 or 17 or whatever that'd be right there. And so we are going to go back and just retime these tests real quick just to see how they fare. So it's able to do it. Now we'll quickly redo some of these things. One. All right, with the driving test now complete, we are going to move on to some drilling tests. All right, so for the next test, we do have new self-eating spade bits. These ones are gonna be from Diablo, and I do have a half incher for each to start out. All right, so moving up a step to the half inch, or sorry, Five eighths, the first one was the half inch. Now we are still in speed two with the DeWalt. It was able to do it a step further than the Milwaukee, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects the times. So now we are going with the three quarter inch. Okay, so as you can see, we're reaching the limit of what's comfortable. Now, it was technically through when it tried ripping it out of my hand. Kind of catches there on the bottom. But obviously, that's one of the concerns with the smaller tools is there's enough torque that it can do that. So uh, we're in speed one with the DeWalt now. Just to kind of describe what's happening here, the the Milwaukee is becoming hard to manage at this point. The DeWalt was still fairly effortless there. And so you can kind of tell a difference in power that way. All right, one inch is where we're going to be stopping, uh, even if the tools can do it. So let's go ahead and give this a try.
the Milwaukee here, we're getting readings of 115. The Dewald on the other hand, I can't feel it through the gloves. That doesn't mean it's not getting warm. It's just that one was getting hot to the touch through the gloves. Okay. So by comparison, I mean, I've got a reading of 93 degrees, 96. All right, so conclusion time. I've, I've just shown you kind of the different comparison times between the two. I don't need to see the results to know that the DeWalt's going to be crowned the winner of this test. It was faster, it was stronger, it was noticeable in the test, and it was more comfortable to use, not just because of the heat, but because of the power that it had to kind of push its way through those jobs. It was noticeable in the driving task, even after I corrected my mistake of having it in the wrong clutch position. And it was noticeable when I got to the drilling test. There was a difference between these two tools. They are both using brand new bits. They each had their own bit. And there is a big difference in there. Now that by no means means that the Milwaukee is a bad tool. I think it just means that it's a little bit older and DeWalt had the benefit of comparing against it as they're coming out with their tool and obviously having something to benchmark against. That's a big point that I try and make on this channel is understand that they know what competition is out there. The real compelling thing is that you're going to have the successor to this, the Gen 3 M12 fuel hammer drill and impact driver coming out late next month. I think the last date I saw was ships August 30th or something like that. And so when those come out, it's going to be interesting to see if DeWalt then is the one playing catch up and having to try and push forward with a more powerful tool in a smaller size. You're really starting to get to the point with these 12 volt tools that you're actually now pushing into the territory of an 18 volt drill. Something I'm gonna have come out in the next month or two is going to be a comparison to a subcompact 18 volt drill and just trying to see like, what is the true comparison out there and is there one that's going to be better for you as you do it. Now, obviously with something like the Milwaukee M12 lineup, you do gain tools that you would not otherwise not have access to and form factors you wouldn't otherwise have access to on the M12 lineup. And so that is a benefit of M12 and one of the reasons why you can feel good buying into this. Now, right now, there's a lot of deals to be had on this tool. If you go pick up the Gen 2 M12 fuel set, you are not going to be disappointed in what you have just know that at this point in time, it's not going to be the most powerful thing. And when the new fuel stuff does come out, it likely is going to be more powerful than it. Similar form factor, albeit a little bit smaller and some maybe some better ergonomics in terms of lighting and different things like that, but it is still going to be a good tool. And this M12 drill is a good tool. Now, what can I say about the DeWalt? Well, it's a great tool. It was actually very comfortable to use. More comfortable, in fact, than my beloved M12 over here. And that is something that is noticeable here is that you are getting some improved ergonomics. Um, as much as I love the M12 lineup and as much as because of that vast lineup, I'm not going to depart from M12. If DeWalt makes a big push into getting some trade focus tools in that lineup, which they already have some, they really are going to benefit from the advanced ergonomics. Now the DeWalt still feels like it's less high quality in terms of how it's built than what the Milwaukee is. The Milwaukee feels like a tank. Not to say this one feels overly plastic, but I do wonder about its longevity if put through some really heavy, intense things. DeWalt makes quality plastics. I'm not worried about them breaking just under light duty use. I just wonder how well they're gonna hold up long-term when being put through that. So when it comes down to it tonight, we do have a winner. It is the DeWalt, it is the newer drill, and that shows. Either one of these is gonna be a great addition to your shop, and I do think you are going to enjoy having either one of them. They're powerful enough to get some jobs done, but they're not going to be super heavy, and we're not gonna see that. So for now, for the next month and a half, uh, for roughly the next month to month and a half, the DeWalt is the champion of the 12-volt hammer drills. 
We'll see what Milwaukee comes back with when that comes out. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of Tinker with Tools. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to keep seeing new videos. And make sure to check the bell notification so that you can get notified when I put out a new video. If you like the video itself, go ahead and hit that like button so that it can get shared with more and more people like you. Giving that like button a smash is really going to help it do that. Now, if you have any questions, hit me in the comments and I'll be happy to answer those for you. Until next time, this has been Tinker with Tools.